So we're live tonight again, Spirited Art Studio. Hello everybody. My name is Laura David Foster and I'm an art therapist and facilitator of this Spirited Art Studio, which is now live stream on Facebook. Um, originally, it is located at Robertson Wesley United Church and their lower level, we have a beautiful studio there with lots of art materials and um, it's a complimentary program that the um, Robertson Wesley United Church provides for the community and um, I am privileged to be the facilitator and there have also been other facilitators that have been with us so thank you for those of you who are joining us Please, uh, please comment and let me know you're there and you're um, with me tonight and uh, then I'll begin. While I'm waiting for people to arrive, I'm just going to talk about uh, the weather. It's not looking a lot like spring out there, but uh, um, Spring is, spring is coming and the one sign we do have that spring is on its way is the longer daylight hours. It's so nice to see that at seven o'clock at night, uh, it's still um, daylight and um, it's not, the sun's not going down for, for a while yet. Um, I think, I'm not sure when the, when it exactly is sundown for us, but um, the sunset is at 8.05, so, so we've got an hour of daylight, but um, I have also got my light on, so hopefully I'll have a nice enough light in here um, for I'm doing some artwork in my little, my little pop-up studio right here in my house. Um, this is in, in my kitchen and uh, just in, on my, my uh, table in my kitchen, just like um, I think a lot of us always do, right? We set up our art on our kitchen table. It's just nice and nice and easy and handy thing to do. Hi, Michelle. Good to see you. Hi, Christina. Good to see you too. Thank you for joining me tonight and uh, good to see you. I think you may have seen uh, what we're going to be doing tonight and I'm just going to wait for a few more people before, before we get started and um, it's just kind of like uh, our regular art studio, kind of wait for people to arrive before Oh, you're at the kitchen table too, Christina. That's good. That's good. Thanks for letting me know that. Doesn't it feel like we're less alone when we, we can do this, when we can communicate on this live stream, uh, social media? I'm just really thankful for this. It feels uh, like we have connection and we're, we're not socially isolated. We may be physically, uh, isolated from our studio, but we're not socially we're together. We're here tonight. So thank you for joining in. So speaking of being socially isolated and being at home, I've, I've saw some, I've seen some different things on Facebook about reframing that instead of thinking we're stuck at home. Um, it's good to remember that uh, we're safe. We're safe at home, and um, and that's that's a real privilege right now. Um, when we we see what's going on in the world, it's good to just remember that. But it's as easy as that is to say. It's not not so easy to to really fully um, fully appreciate that I, I mean 
I don't know about you, but I'm beginning to feel lonely, lonesome for people, lonesome for social interaction, uh, like real social interaction, not just virtual, um, like a real pat on the back or handshake or, or a hug. I mean, you know, a hug be between friends, between family, all of a sudden that's become, you know, something that we, we can't do right now. And uh, other than those who are happen to be in your uh, bubble, if you have people who live with you, um, give them a hug for me. Um, if, but if you're like me and you're living at home um, on your own, um, it's uh, not something you can do right now. But if you have a pet, who has pets? Maybe you, a cat or a dog. It's great to be able to snuggle up with your pets. And it's looking like I'm noticing on, again, on social media that um, a lot of people have started to um, get get new pets, which is wonderful. That is, that's a, a great way to um, work through this period of uh, social isolation is by, by having companionship of a pet. Um, thankfully, pets are not, uh, not um, carriers of this virus, so they can comfort us and companion us in this time when we're isolated. So, so I'm glad for you if you have a pet. Um, then again, I, I used to have a dog, a wonderful dog, and uh, I'm, I'm really missing my dog right now. Dog Shiloh was my dog's name, and uh, Shiloh was uh, a wonderful, companion, just such a really nice dog and uh, it's very, very affectionate and love to, love to just snuggle up and uh, be a companion. So, so those of you who have pets, just, uh, just enjoy your pets for me. <laughs> so for those of you who are like me and you can't have a pet for whatever reason and if you're uh, alone in your living situation right now you're single you're alone and uh, i'm just going to suggest that you give yourself a hug for me we're all going to give ourselves a hug and so um this is going to be like uh, a group hug. So I am going to give myself a hug. Big hug like this. And um, yeah, just uh, I was talking about self compassion last week. So I'm just giving myself a hug and I'm really wanting to just feel uh, the hug like I'm, I'm receiving it and not giving it. So I guess I am both giving myself a hug and receiving the hug, but I am just really focusing on just re receiving this hug and just feeling it and just feeling that embrace. Okay, that, that felt good. So I can't um, give anybody, any of my family or friends hugs right now, but I'm asking all of you to give yourselves a hug for me. So that was how I wanted to um, just think about how we can move past this um, feeling of 
not having that physical uh, physical presence of each other. So, um, the Spirited Art Studio. This is has always been about community and connecting with each other and about friendship as much as it has been about art making. Hi Doug, that's my brother Doug. Good to see you. Doug, you're just talking about hugs and um, give, your, give yourself a hug, give Eileen a hug, give Zoe a hug for me. I'm just talking about how, how it's tough in this time where we need to be staying at home, where we need to be self-isolating. Um, that just, ha it, we're missing the physical presence of each other, um, that maybe we've taken for granted um, in the recent past. Um, now we're not so much, we're, we're missing each other. So hi there everybody, and thanks for being here with me tonight. And um, give yourself a hug for me. So tonight, um, I put on Facebook, on our Facebook page, uh, right before we were starting, I, um, oops, I just have to get my screen back on. There we go. So I posted two photos for our Spirited Art Studio live stream, live stream. and um, one is a photo of uh, tulips. These are the tulips that I was talking about in our last live stream session. And um, so we're going to be doing some, some gesture drawings of still life. And this is um, just an example that I put up. Uh, in case you don't have anything that um, you might like to do a gesture drawing with, you can. You have those tulips there that you can try um, your hand at. So I also posted um, because, as you can see, my my um, words are backwards on this screen. So I posted um, my sketchbook page on what is a gesture drawing so that you could see, um, see it forwards and not backwards. So what is a gesture drawing? Basically, it's a quick drawing that captures the essential gesture of a subject in its most distilled form. So basically, it's just a quick drawing and to just to, to capture the essence of what the subject is. So I provided a quick sketch of these two looks just to show you um, what I'm talking about. And this is this quote, by the way, is just, I just found it on when I googled gesture drawing online. Typically, gesture drawing is um, uh, figures, uh, people, people in action doing different things and uh, you just do quick sketches, um, just almost as warm-ups before you're doing more um, long drawings of people, but gesture drawings um, are, can also be for still life and also uh, landscape. So today we're going to focus on still life and still life is basically uh, uh, inanimate subject matter that may be on your table. Um, a vase of flowers is a very typical still life. Other items could be um, 
you know, pots and pans and um, utensils, uh, anything that you could just do a quick sketch of. So I'll just show you um, a gesture drawing I did of these tulips. So this was probably like under under a minute. So I just I just quickly just looked at the what I was drawing the tulips and just quickly sketched it with a sharpie. So. Um, one thing you can do if you're not quite uh, comfortable with just taking a sharpie and just drawing, you, you, the first thing you could do is maybe circle, circle around and just get your bearings on where, where the florals are, where the stems are, and then take the sharpie and, and begin to draw. But what you really want to do is just have some fun with it, have capture the essence, capture the essence. What does that really mean? It's capturing the, how the leaves are together and held on the stem. It's amazing to me how they almost defy gravity with the way flowers will sit on their stems. And so that is, uh, that's my uh, gesture drawing of the tulips that you have that I've posted online. So I encourage you to, to give it a try yourself. Um, just do like a two minute drawing of the tulips and just see, see what happens. And um, I'm having, you know, these thought, inner critic thoughts about how, oh, I'm showing this quick drawing. It's not, um, it's not that great. But the thing is, is to focus on the process and just engage in the creative act and um, be present with what you're doing. And that is what it's about. It's sort of a Again, a mindful process. We were talking in our last session about mindfulness and engaging in the present moment, and that's how we can just distance ourselves with whatever ruminations are going on in our minds right now and, um, and just focus and engage on, on some drawing. So um, I noticed that... Um, a couple of you were saying that you did some doodling since our last session. You did some mindful, mindful sketches and uh, doodles and uh, Zen tangles. My sister Joy, um, she's really picked up Zen tangling in a big way, and uh, it's really great to see and she finds it really calming as uh, as this whole process can be just being present um, with present and engaged in the moment and uh, just enjoying the artistic process so um, I'll show you another quick This is another quick gesture drawing. Uh, this is of my phone that's sitting in front of me here. Um, that I'm, I've created this live stream, Facebook live stream. It's on the um, charger, and so that is another one. So I'm going to do one more uh, quick one, and I'm just going to. Do this live here, give it a try. I'm just going to turn my music up a little bit. This is what I'm going to do my gesture drawing of. This is a vase, and 
this is a rose that um, it is a rose that blooms really beautifully and I wanted to, to keep keep it for a while so so I hung it upside down and let it dry like that so that I could just keep it and, and admire it for a while and it's a, it was a lovely gift that I got for I'm working um, at, a, at a retreat and so I'm going to do a quick gesture drawing of this. So this is my subject and so I'm going to attempt to capture the essence of this subject in a quick gesture drawing and I will um, show you how, how it goes. So I'm just going to set it down in front of me. So I have the boss and the rose in front of me and my sketchbook and I'm going to begin with my pencil and I'm quickly just going to sketch out where the subject is on my page. So starting with the rose, sketching in the stem and sketching in where the the boss is. Okay, so I probably, I'm just going to darken in my pencil lines so it's easier for you to see. So that's the initial quick um, sort of like guidelines that I've made for myself before I go into the gesture drawing with the felt pen. So now I'm going to choose a, a wine colored sharpie um, to do the gestural drawing of the rose bud. Okay, so again this is the rose. Hi Donna, good to see you. Um, I hope you will give this a try and just enjoy enjoy watching for now. But um, yeah, if you want to give this a try later, you, all you really need is a sharpie and a pencil and a sketch pad or any kind of paper that you happen to have at home. So I'm just going to begin with um, sketching out the rose and I'm looking at where I see the details and and just kind of uh, starting out where I see the, the details on the page. some darker areas that I just want to accentuate a little bit. And a lot of artists will do gesture drawings just to get sort of as a warm-up and just to get familiar with their subject matter uh, before they do a more extended drawing or painting of their subject. Um, but Gesture drawings are also an artwork in, of themselves, and um, you'll see in art museums um, or in artist sketchbooks um, the how gesture drawings are are beautiful in and of themselves. So, and I'm now going to switch over to. Um, a green sharpie for the for the stem and leaves. I'm not saying beautiful. I'm, I'm, that is a 
judgment and judgment is uh, hi Mary Kay good to see you you just threw out your shriveled bouquet a few days ago oh no well maybe you have a photograph if not I posted two lips online and you can give those two lips a try and um, you can refer back to earlier in the video and you'll see um, where I did my own uh, gesture drawing. They will also post photos of these uh, gesture drawings later. So I'm going to carry on with this drawing. I've got, I've got my, my rosebud completed. That's uh, sort of a gestural drawing capturing the essence of this dried out rosebud. I like to say instead of I've dried out, it's 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 um it's it's still you know it's still here with us. It's not gone away. So it's, we still have the essence and the spirit of the rose with us. So now I'm doing the. the stem and the petals. So I just um, I just kind of look at the subject and just try to emanate what I see on the page. So this is um, what I'm seeing. So it's really amazing how when you when you spend time drawing and you really see things that you really see things in, in the subject matter that you otherwise wouldn't have and uh, and that's the real um, the real pleasure in the in creating and uh, making art is is just really enjoying it, enjoying what you see, and enjoying the creative process and um, putting the subject matter to your page and seeing what happens in the process. It's kind of like magic. How how when you create art. It, uh, it is, it is a, a wonderful, wonderful process uh, to engage in. So this is my, my rose and the stem. So again, it's a, it's a dried flower. I'm, I'm decided I'm gonna put a little bit more color in the rose bud because there's quite a bit of variation in color in it. As you can see, there's uh, light, lighter pinks and wine colored pinks. Uh, I'm going to put in a deeper red just to give it some shading. So I'll grab my, my red sharpie and just add to the colors. Again, I'm just um, being prompted by what I see when I look at the subject matter, and this works whether you whether you're drawing from a, um, from life, from still life, or whether you are drawing from a photograph. Photographs, when you're drawing from photographs, it can be handy to draw right from your laptop or your computer screen so that the photo is uh, right up in front of you, held up right in front of you rather than um, lying down beside you. It's, it's easier to see it that way. So that's my suggestion. So yeah, I'm adding some 
some deeper red colors to my my rosebud. So this is an extended time that I'm putting in for this gestural drawing. But it's still still a relatively quick drawing uh, compared to doing uh, an extended uh, painting or drawing or sketch. So, hi everybody, good to see you. Thanks for joining me tonight in this snowy night. Oh, watching that snow come down, it's, uh, it's not feeling like spring, but um, we're safe inside and thankful for that. So I just show everybody again. So this is my this is my dried rose in a vase. So this is kind of a frosty uh, colored teal sort of vase and I'm just trying to decide what color I'm going to use. So I think I'm going to take this Sharpie. Um, seems to be close enough to the color of the subject. Uh, you know, I think I'm going to, before I do that, I'm going to take a, um, take my graphite pencil and just pencil in pencil it in a bit more. Um, so, just feeling out where the, where the shape is. Just pencil and sharpies. I think I'm going to show you how this vase could just stay um, black and white. So first of all, I'm finishing the the work, the pencil work. to just do sort of a contour line drawing and taking in what I see, putting my pen to page and capturing the essence of the drawing. Huh. So, the vase is not as symmetrical as it could be. Sometimes I like to just stand up and, and look at it from a distance and see how I could maybe take my pen and just add a little more to make it uh, <clears throat> a little more symmetrical. So that's uh, that's the drawing with the the pencil. 
pencil, graphite pencil, and the fine tipped marker. And now I'm just going to add some color. As you can see, this is uh, sort of a dusty teal color. And um, I'm just not sure I have the right color here. I'm just going to reach over. some more Sharpies in this container of Sharpies. So I think this is going to be a better, a better pen to add. So Mary Kay is saying, I'll find a big red rose on my laptop. Great idea. That's one uh, great source of uh, subject matter is our computer. We can just Google images and find whatever image we're looking for um, right online and, and click on it and there you've got your subject matter. So we don't have any roses, don't have flowers or vases handy. You can just simply look it up um, to, with Google. And uh, so yeah, great idea, Mary Kay. Uh, thanks for thanks for adding that. So I'm using this pen, and I'm just going to I say just a lot. The part, yeah, I'm noticing that. I know what that means. So I'm adding color to my vase. Just sort of portray the vase when it, and capture the essence of what, it, what it's looking like to me right now, tonight. And so I'm just about finished, finished with the sketch. Another thing you could do, you could do the whole thing with, instead of using Sharpies and felt pens, you could do just a complete drawing with pencil, with a simple uh, HB pencil. Or you could, if you have pencil crayons, you could do a colored drawing with pencil crayons. If you have, happen to have um, other art supplies on hand, like watercolors, pastels. Pastels uh, can be really, really fun because they can get really um, thick and add a lot of, a lot of dimension to the, and give it a sort of a more 3D quality to your drawing. Um, and we'll get into that perhaps in uh, another session, in another afternoon or evening. Thank you. Thanks, Mary Kay. Thanks, Michelle. Well, Michelle is saying pixabay.com is a great source of royalty-free photos. Okay, that is a good point. We wanna, wanna try and look to that, either our own photos or royalty-free photos. Um, but it, um, if this is just for personal use uh, in our personal sketchbooks, then um, I'm not sure how critical it is to, but still good practice. So thank you, Michelle. So, but you're, you're all welcome to use my photo of my tulips uh, that I've posted online and I look forward to um, any kinds of gestural drawings that you, um, that you make and if you want to post them, if you want to send them to me, my email address is on one of my previous posts. It's spiritedartstudio at rwuc.org. 
So you're welcome to send me a photo uh, if you'd like to do that as well. So this is my gesture drawing of my, my dry rose in my vase. So um, I'm not exactly proud of that drawing, but I, it was really something that I enjoyed engaging, uh, engaging in and doing, just creating a quick drawing and capturing the essence of this dried flower in this vase. So I'm thinking that um, one thing you can do to get some deeper shades in a, in a flower or in any subject matter is by taking the complementary color. So the complementary color of red is green. So I'm going to take a green and go back to the green Sharpie that I was using for my stem and add a little few more shades into my rose just to add a little more detail to again capture a little more of the uh, essence and enjoy just taking a little more time with it. So I'm now kind of sort of, sort of uh, looking at a little more definition and detail in each of the petals that I'm seeing. process just to that you might have on your kitchen table. And I'm just going to add a little bit more red again on top of the green because I just want to, although I wanted the green for the depth and the darkening, I want to go over top of it with some red. So that even though I have the, the dark and, and the shading, it still is red. So you really could just continue on with it as long as you like until um, I'm also going to add some red to the stem and, and get some some shading into the stem so it's not so one-dimensional. Add, add 
add some shading and all of a sudden it adds, adds more to the drawing. Okay, so this is it. This is my gesture drawing of a rose. So thank you everybody for, for joining in tonight. And I encourage you to do some gesture drawing uh, this week and we'll see you again if you if you're able to join us on Wednesday afternoon we'll be doing similar gesture drawings uh, only we'll be switching to landscape so talk to you on Wednesday and uh, we'll see you stay safe and be well bye for now